there's a vesicular pattern which seems to uh, be, you know, sort of chicken pox like or maybe measles like, but small papules, sometimes actual small little blisters, so vesicles, tends to be on the trunk. And this tends to be a couple days after the patient is already symptomatic systemically, kind of with upper respiratory symptoms or fever. And, uh, you know, they may even be hospitalized already, uh, but they have symptoms of COVID-19. So uh, that that rash on the trunk usually comes a couple days after having already had those symptoms and the patient generally seems to already be aware that have been already diagnosed with COVID-19. Then there's a second major pattern that is bruise-like, purpuric, um, and not a bruise like when you bang your arm and you have a circle or oval, uh, but sort of a branching pattern um, or sort of lace-like pattern. And um, that, or sometimes actually gangrene of the fingers. And that pattern seems to be in hospitalized patients generally who are very sick um, and already diagnosed with COVID-19. But a couple of case reports have described a somewhat bruise-like also branching pattern in patients who had COVID in the past or you know, have been at home relatively asymptomatic. So there's that pattern. And it's a little harder because some of those patients are very sick, but some actually are not. And the a third major pattern is what's been in the media as COVID toes. And that doesn't only affect the toes, it can affect fingers, bottoms of feet, heels as well. That pattern seems to be a late manifestation in patients who most of the time are asymptomatic, mostly in children, but it can certainly be in adults. And if those patients are tested for either nasopharyngeal swabs, for PCR testing, for SARS-CoV-2, or if they actually get serologic tests, so blood tests for IgM or IgG against the virus, they are generally negative, but occasional patients have been described in the literature as positive. There's a category that I say is sort of nonspecific. And um, in the more recent Journal of American Academy of Dermatology article, that would include things like macular papular rashes, urticarial rashes, papulosquamous rashes. In terms of the histopathology, the vesicular rash is less well characterized than uh, the other two, but the vesicular rash from the literature, I admit I have not seen it, seems to be multinucleate cells within the epidermis and a little bit of an inflammatory infiltrate in the dermis. The bruise-like pattern corresponds to vascular occlusion, so actually clots within small or medium-sized vessels. And COVID toes, that perniosis-like lesion that's acral, that tends to have what looks like pernio, idiopathic perniosis. So perivascular and sometimes periacrine lymphocytic infiltrates, sometimes a little bit of vascular change at the dermopodermal junction, and sometimes some edema within the papillary dermis. In the large Spanish study with lead author uh, Dr. Galvan Casas, that the pattern would be, they called it maculopapular or urticarial. And the histopathology of those is much less well characterized because in general, those patients are, some of them are hospitalized, but because they're known to have COVID-19, um, biopsies weren't necessarily done on their skin rash. Uh, but there are a couple of reports in the literature that suggest that it is a uh, mixed inflammatory pattern with the derm within the dermis with eosinophils. Um, in terms of say a papillosquamous or psoriasiform pattern, Judging from what the clinical lesion looks like, it would probably be skin thickening and with some degree of inflammation in the dermis. There are a couple interesting case reports. There was one that I read recently, uh, and I'm forgetting which journal. I apologize about that. But um, they described urticarial lesions in a COVID-19 patient with the histopathology. And it was interesting because the authors commented that although the lesions looked quite urticarial, and I agree with the authors, the histopathology showed a little bit of interface change with uh, lymphocytic infiltrate. So 
it's possible that uh, what we might predict for the histopathology based on what the clinical morphology looks like might not be quite the same. And so more studies and uh, evidence, I'm sure, will come out and we'll have to go with that data.